Oh, hail the gifted child. The stench of your exploits follows you as closely as a virgin clings to the sacrosanct until the invidious Fizzgig's bodkin bursts through the other side of her delicate, facile flesh. You find me, Fanny Antony. A herd and blackguard lingering by a fiery bosom. I've imbibed, but I've yet to drink enough to soil my prowess. Draw your sword. Through violence will you understand the grim conclusion, part four of Chapel Trap House. And DM Patches present Rise of the Unblooded Curse of the Mad King Job Have at ye uh, You're in the office of Nanchucket, who are cowering under their desk, of course, quietly humming to themselves, not throwing away my shot, not throwing away my shot, as they're terrified of what's going to come for them. Uh, yeah, but you guys are inside of the castle, the Alabaster Palace. Uh, Fausti's Tower is somewhere, uh, probably towards the back of the palace, off to the side, so you can sort of navigate your way there. i um, going to ask these... Uh, uh, these two, or this one. I don't know how two heads work. These two. I know how that works. So yeah, what do you guys want to do? You're in the palace. You can find your way to Fausti. Um, you have these two here cowering under the desk while the revolt goes on. To hell with these curs, but you know, we are in Bill's Hall right now. I mean, to me, out of his many faults as a king, uh, chief among them was his inability to retain homunculi in his body <laughs> and, and spilling seed. I know he attempted to retain seed um, with many of his comely maidens, but ultimately mm-hmm. his inability to retain his body's natural homunculi, homunculi uh, made him a, 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 a really a decadent early modern leader that I, I despise. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think, like, yeah, he... Um sent 50 talents of gold to the Holy Land every year. But you could tell, like, in his heart, he was against it. <laughs> it was kind of like one of the... It started a trend of anti-Holy Land kings. Oh, yeah. So I really hate him. <laughs> and he, 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 like... The worst thing he did was he pardoned a guy who traded... Sp- illegally traded spices with the Persian kingdom. <laughs> his, friend, his friend Marcus the Rich. He's such a... Fuck him. I hate him. You see uh, uh, Nanchucket, they hear you guys disparaging uh, Bill's name, and they look to you, and they say, please don't kill us. Uh, uh, Yeah, please don't kill me. Uh, You can do what you want with her. Uh, Just kidding, Nan. Just a little joke between friends. Please don't kill us. I'm kind of curious. If I could just, like, cut him in half, what would happen to him? I kind of want to find out. Yeah. Roll, uh, you don't even, uh, yeah, roll an attack roll. Uh, actually, roll medicine. Wow, pretty good. They are able to live for like a full 17 seconds after you do that. Um, <laughs> they are <laughs> sputtering and screaming. Uh, uh, you see Nan, and uh, uh, she's like, my only regret is that I don't have Jenny's with me. And uh, <laughs> and Chuck is so excited by his newfound independence that he immediately starts jacking off. Because he, <laughs> <able to, laughs> he hasn't been able to do it since they were fused. Yeah. Thank God. Oh, interns. And they slowly die. Um, you see a, a, a shit fuck is just sort of lapping up the remains uh, happily. Where out of the uh, uh, corner of your eye, com- walking in through Bill's hole into the, the office of Nanchucket, uh, you see two skeletons. One, a, it's like a haunted-looking man, uh, uh, gaunt, shuddering and shivering. He sounds like wind rattling hollow cavern. Uh, it is the lingering attendant, Perez. Um, the other, a similarly thin-looking man, uh, quite gaunt, quite skinny. Uh, uh, and I say gaunt and skinny because they are masquerading as people, but they are 
believe you, uh, they're skeletons with sort of flesh pulled over them. Uh, uh, the one uh, Cardinal uh, Cardinal Carvel, and they look to you, Matt, after you bisect them. And the lingering attendant Perez holds up his finger, shaking, and points it at you and goes, <laughs> and Carvel. What you see, Tommy? Tell me about that. Oh, Lord, as I live and breathe, Mon ami, is that you? Let me get a closer look at you, son. And he, he starts walking, shambling, really, um, mm-hmm. towards... By the way, he um, Perez is wearing a sort of the traditional outfit of the uh, mm-hmm. Black City elite. You know, he's wearing a nice tunic with pinstripes on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the strategist, the skeletal strategist Carville is wearing a uh, LSU rugby shirt. That's um, right. <laughs> and he, he, he just... <laughs> He really he looks. The, he's wearing the sigil of the tiger, obviously. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and, a, and a little and a little tiny cap. And he looks. He's dressed like shit, but you know that he's one of the most powerful and, and wealthy strategists in in the capital. Mm-hmm. He starts shambling towards Matt, and he says, "On a passe, boy, that is you. You've grown, son. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought that Vince." was supposed to leave you in that diabet <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Mon Ami had a little change of heart. Must have been 20 years since I seen you. How you been, son? You been eating? Uh, Looks to you, Matt. Yes, I, I, I've been eating. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you throwing me back into childhood. Yeah, you, you look like you've been eating. Oh. You know, if I seen you when you was skinny, I would have cooked you up a little etouffee. Little <laughs> Jambalaya, you know, I would have fed you right. Oh. You, <laughs> you big. Oh. You grown, my oh. boy. You, oh. oh, you here, <laughs> you here to attack the capital. No, no, oh. I'm a good boy. You, you poor beast. As the, the, the rushing memories come to you, Matt, as this haunting realization lingers in the back of your mind about your origins, what, what's going through your mind? What is, what is happening? What do you remember? I'm just remembering being a small child in in the dark woods, uh, wandering away from my bear cave, and and a horrifying, <laughs> sickly white, chalky, bald creature uh, <laughs> extending his his talon-like hands to me and taking me uh, on a boat to to an island in the middle of a li- of a river and showing me to. To all of his, his other cloaked brethren, <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. I can't think about it. It's too horrifying. I just yeah, uh, turn into a little ball on the floor. Sh- shit, fuck! Immediately jumps in front of you and starts growling at Carville uh, uh, to tell him to back off. You hear him go, rah, 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 rah. you hear Matt. You hear you hear him going like, "Back off, you Cajun fuck! Back off, my friend, son, you." You backed the wrong horse. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't supposed to be with the red cloaks. You know who your daddy is. And almost on cue, in the word horse, you hear the pathetic limp gallop of the oldest, thinnest horse uh, mildly nuzzle open the door to this office. Riding on top of it is General John Kerry. Reporting for duty, <laughs> and he starts oh my God. the shamble in, and uh, as as Carvel's about to drop a bomb, so to speak, uh, the horse's ankle breaks <laughs> and falls on top of Carvel, the skeleton, and Kerry lands and hits his head on the corner of the desk, and t- uh, the lingering attendant Perez uh, uh, falls into pieces into like a, a bowling pin. Uh, like a bowling pin just sounds everywhere, like as he falls to the ground. Carville has a gasping breath as he holds his hand up, uh, uh, pointing at you, Matt. Ça c'est bon. Ça c'est bon. Yeah, uh, so that scene plays out in front of you, Matt. You were brought back to this horrible place in your childhood and some revelation, incoming revelation, uh, uh, coming towards you. You guys, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Um, about this this whole scene it's pretty crazy i don't know if you want to if you're just like we gotta get to the tower or if you want to debrief and make sure matt's okay i i think i could say a few words to him that could cheer him up (laughs) 
Okay, I go over to him on a ball on the floor. All right, I'm, I'm walking up. I'm like, I kneel down. I'm using my inside voice. You know, normally in a situation like this, I would give somebody a tablet, but this isn't really like a tablet problem. This is like, this is an emotional problem, right? It's like, we all have these ideas about ourselves growing up. You know, for, for you, your idea of yourself is like, oh, I just was, I was a human that, um, from the time I was a little baby, I was a bear, basically, you know, I'm a feral creature. For me, it was more like, you know, I, oh, I can be a, a war general. I can be, I can lead the troops in the Holy Land. I can, uh, people, enough people will like me that I will rise from just, you know, sort of middle nobility into the highest echelon. Well, it turned out that 60% of all people that meet me hate me. <laughs> and I don't work very hard. And so that meant I had to go into pamphlets. Was that, you know, was that the best thing for me? Was that, did that feel good? No. <laughs> no, it didn't. Didn't feel good. It didn't feel good realizing that I would just be this pamphlet guy basically until I died. Uh, <laughs> but I learned to live with it and accept that's kind of always who I've been ever since I was a boy. 60% of people despised me, always. Um, for you, you know, you're, there's always going to be a part of you where it's like, yeah, you grew up outside. <laughs> but now there's this new part of you. And I think it's very interesting that before all this, you were convinced that you wanted to kill God. Well, what if I told you there's a new way where you don't have to kill God. You don't have to, like, no offense to our other friend. Like, you don't have to, like, worship trees. That's out. What if I told you there's a religion and a way of life for people that are born of your circumstances, like, kind of, like, you know, the middle to high up there, where you don't kill God, but you don't really know who he is or why he's doing anything. You're always questioning him. And the point is that you never, the older you get, the further away from any type of concrete answer you get. But the deeper into it you get, you there are more rules that are from God, but there are also more ways that you can break those rules. What if you became someone like that? Where that's your struggle. Breaking rules is pretty fun. All right. Well, how about I officially knight you as a Jewish person? <laughs> but a new type of Judaism that I'm inventing, a reformed Judaism. <laughs> uh, will, will there be uh, succulent foodstuffs from the Orient at uh, key harvest festival times? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So I'm thinking about this. Yes. Yes. During agricultural holidays, we will have the finest feast from the Orient. Okay. When all uh, when all other inns are closed and only these ones are open. That sounds that sounds and good. You got me. Yeah, you can still by the way, you can still eat swine. You just like you go, oh I know I shouldn't do this. <laughs> uh, I, I I too would like to offer some uh, words of encouragement for our, our comrade Matt here. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, okay, look, um, Am I happy you've decided to uh, turn away from the left-hand path of nature towards a, a, a desert monotheist? No, I'm not happy about that. But look, I'm going to let you in on a little secret about me. You were raised by bears. I, I too, was also adopted. There's nothing shameful about it. It's totally normal. And in Celtic indigenous practices, there is nothing, as I, as I said before, it is totally honorable, traditional, and matriarchal. You have a beautiful, well, not beautiful. I mean, you have a sort of average-looking baby that's mis, <laughs> that's you know, mi if, if it's misshapen in some way, yeah. the most honorable thing you can do is leave it um, to be exp exposure to the elements. So, uh, James Carvel and Mistress Matlin, um, look, they did you a favor. And like I said, there's, there's not, there's nothing wrong with being adopted. I'm adopted too. That that does make me feel better. Thank you. I'm ready to go, guys. Thanks. Fuck, fuck that bald piece of shit. Look at him. Yeah, he he looks like shit. He's on the ground and he looks like shit. He's got he's like dying and he says, uh, "That diabear wasn't your daddy, wasn't your stepdaddy, but he was the daddy who stepped up." <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, you guys rush through the castle barreling down any guards in your way. At this point, you guys are, 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 are too fucking cool. You guys can just fucking, like, gut through these guys. And you get to the tower. Uh, you climb up this spiral staircase uh, to get to, finally, to get to where Fausti is. And you hear 
uh, an argument going on as you're approaching the Fauci's, Fauci's tower. Uh, um, you hear a, a, a low humming voice, and you hear a, a, a higher um, uh, ethnic voice uh, uh, as this argument sort of continues. And you hear, uh, first you start to hear uh, uh, the lower voice go, You failed me, Fausti. And then you hear uh, Fausti go, No, 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 I did not fail you. It's a- the capital is going to fall. You have failed. Your spires are useless to me now. I have enough souls. No, no, by Algates, please, please, I let you, I let you run the organization. I let you run the World Health Organization, please. It's too late. If I wanted nagging, I would have stayed married. I'm going to fuck off the little St. James now. I... And yes, you guys approach the st- 